there are four main mandates. Uh, one is about attracting investments into all sectors of the economy. The second is about trade, export, whether it's domestic trade, regional trade, international uh, trade and export. The third area is about industrialization. And the fourth is about enterprise, uh, SME development. Now, this, this event is mainly about investments. And uh, CBC is a common institute set up primarily to do a lot of other political things. But in addition to that, uh, they do help with the facilitation of investments into the different Commonwealth countries. We've had a partnership with them. We started last year where they had an event in Nigeria and they had a second event in Australia. There's a second Nigerian event where they bring together uh, investors from different parts of the world into Nigeria to look at the investment opportunities in the country. So it just makes natural sense for the ministry to partner with them uh, in terms of helping them to make sure that it's a successful event and we address the issues and work with investors uh, that are very interested in investing in Nigeria. Now, um, one of the key things that you mentioned in your speech earlier was that the global investment patterns are changing. And we, I want to find out from you, what does that mean for the African continent, particularly in Nigeria? How is that affecting us? There's a big paradigm shift because of the economic situation in the world today. We live in a world today where uh, countries accounting for more than 70% of the world GDP, uh, where those countries are grappling with sovereign debt crisis. Because of the sovereign debt crisis, there's a big the fiscal consolidation and fiscal discipline has become the order of the day because they have to reduce their budgetary allocation, the money they spend, otherwise debt will go up. Uh, that means that they have less money to invest in critical sectors. Also, we live in a world today where economic growth has stagnated in many countries, slowed down in some of the developed economies, and the reverse, uh, and with a high level of unemployment. But that's not the story of Africa. Again, those countries, if you look at those countries, most of them have been downgraded. Even America has been downgraded. You see the opposite in Africa today, where African economies are being upgraded in terms of credit rating, where the debt to GDP ratio for African countries, take Nigeria for example, our debt to GDP ratio is under 20%. When you compare that with Europe, Europe average is about 88%. U.S. is about 100%. So the macroeconomic environment is much, much stronger. Again, when you compare that, the economic growth in, in Africa, you are seeing seven of the 10 fastest growing economies in the world are in Africa. And Nigeria is one of those seven. And if you look at Nigeria in particular, over the last 10 years, the average growth has been roughly but close to about 7%. Even this quarter, Q2, we did 6.3%. So, and when you look at risk-adjusted returns on investment, it's much, much higher in Africa and in particular in Nigeria. What that means is that sophisticated investors are now moving money to the dynamic emerging markets, where the macroeconomic environment is far more stable, where they're going to make higher and better risk-adjusted returns on their level of investment, and where they see the projection that in the next 20 to 30 years, those are the countries that will be controlling the world economy in a way, or will be playing a big role, not controlling, be a big role in the world economy. So investors are looking at the, what they call the last frontier. 